I know this is a surprise. Normally we don't go live, um, especially not during the week, um, normally more towards the weekend. But I am starting a new series. It's going to be for my members and I am going to be interviewing um, different people who want to share their up cycles, their spaces, kind of like a more informal next top up cycler. So I'm gonna come up with a clever name for it. And I just wanted to share with everybody today because I have a very special guest. Um, I can, I am working on another system other than YouTube. So I can see that there are a few of you guys on here. Um, if you want to leave comments, I can also see your comments. So definitely let me know where you're watching from. Um, give us a big hi. Hi, Lainey. Um, and we'll, and if you have any questions, definitely let us know um, what your questions are. But I want to introduce the person who taught me how to sew. And if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I can be a little bit frustrating. So you give this lady big props for teaching me how to sew. Um, and it is my mother. <laughs> hey buddy, how are you? <laughs> she is here um, to be my first interviewee. And I'm super excited to have her on. Um, she's also in my upcycle class. It's more of an upcycle get together um, that we have right. once a month. So um, it's just a tribe of people who love upcycling. Hi, Creations by Kimberly. Hi, what does that say? Cheeks and Matilda. We got people from wow. Brooklyn, from Maryland, wow. from LA. Yay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Mandisa, I see you guys. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> I'm glad you caught us live. This is a different day, so maybe different people will be able to catch us. And you guys definitely consider, if you like this content, definitely consider becoming a member. It is for all members, no matter what the level. So all the way from $2 up to the $20 level is for all members. So consider that. All right. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, definitely hit that subscribe button. All right, so like I said, this is my mom, Linda, and um, she is the person who taught me how to sew, and she's also the person who um, I get my creative bug from, like just being really creative, thinking outside the box, always trying to do something new. Um, that's definitely her, even more than me. She's always got something in her hand sewing, always. Always. So, <laughs> yes, always. always. Um, and for me, when I'm done, I'm done. Like, I'm going to lay in the bed. I'm going to watch Netflix. But she always is sitting in her chair. Even if she's watching TV, she has something in her hands. So, um, yeah, creativity definitely comes from her. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to let her introduce herself however she wants to, and then we'll get into the interview. Hi, everybody. My name is Linda. I'm Angelina's mom. And... I am a sewing enthusiast. Well, let me correct that. Not just sewing. I am a sewing, crafting, into everything enthusiast. I love learning new, new, uh, new things. So, uh, like she said, I'm always have so. They used to always kid me when we would watch a movie twice. And I would make a comment, oh, wait, when did they put that in that movie? And they would say, Mom, it was always there. You just never saw it because you always had something in your hand and you always doing something. So you missed half the movie. So I always have to watch a movie two or three times. But anyway, but I love, love just being creative. And I've been this way as long as I can remember. I remember as a kid, uh, we didn't have the money to make the Christmas villages. So I would take anything in the house and create it. So it's always been something I've enjoyed. I still enjoy. I don't think I'll ever stop doing it. So welcome everybody. Welcome. <laughs> All right. So let's start it off with how and when did you learn how to sew? <sighs> My earliest memory of sewing is maybe in my early, early teens, or maybe even a little bit younger than that, uh, I remember making dial, dial clothes, having dials and having them Barbie clothes and 
uh, having stuff laid all over the floor, trying to cut and trying to fit it on the dowels. That's kind of my earliest memory of sewing was trying to sew for dowels. And that's crazy yeah. because that's exactly how I started. So you also yep. use that to teach me and yep. my sisters, even though one doesn't sew, but <laughs> me and, and my sisters. She, huh? she says she's never, she never will. It's not her thing. No, not her thing. But me <laughs> and my youngest sister do sew. And mm -hmm. um, that is definitely how we were taught how to sew. So I right. think that's like a full right. circle moment, which I think is awesome. Um, right. And... I would like to know, can you remember like the first thing you made for yourself? Actually, yes, I can remember. Um, I made this one, one thing I remember I was so proud of. It might've been things before but that, but it was a jacket with a hood on it. And I loved, loved that jacket. I just thought I was the bomb. It was in high school. I, I don't care who liked it, who didn't like it. I loved it. I wore it. And I remember some of the kids didn't like it. I didn't care. I liked it. Do you it remember like what, a, what grade it was? It was uh, my uh, the summer of my, right before my senior year. Because I remember wearing it the, uh, to school. And I thought I was, uh, I, I wouldn't say Little Red Riding Hood because it was gray. So I was Little Gray Riding Hood. But I, I was I was sharp. I was the bomb. I thought I was. I didn't <laughs> thought. Oh, but that was my first thing I remember making for myself because I took sewing classes. It was I think it was my junior year. I had some idea how to sew, but I just wanted some pointers. So, yeah. After that, it, it was all uphill. Um, I want to say a quick shout out to Joanna. I see another one of our class members here. So, hey, Joanna, um, I see you in the chat. And when you guys have questions, I'll when we answer them later on, I'll put your question up on the screen so everybody can see it. Um, so let's get to the nitty gritty. You have started upcycling. You didn't always upcycle, but no, no. you have start. Well, before I say that, I wanted to say that uh, my mom is the person that all my life, has made every single formal wear piece that I've worn. I've never bought a formal dress off the rack. There's very few dresses, period, that I've bought off the rack. Um, right. And she made her own wedding dress. She made mm -hmm. all of my prom dresses, stuff like that, and she made my wedding dress. So, um, yeah. So that's the type of stuff that she's used to doing from right. patterns. And then she would uh, alter the patterns, right? combine right. patterns and different things like that. So right. when did you start upcycling and how is it different than what you were used to in sewing from patterns? Um, I don't know if it's different for me because one thing I realized, even with upcycling, because I'm a person who relies on patterns and I shouldn't as much as I do, even in upcycling, I'll take a pattern and use the pattern to be my guide for my upcycling. But uh, I have to say, I think I remember, and I guess it wasn't called upcycling when you guys were young. Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody would give me a dress for myself, and I didn't like it for me, but I liked the material, I would always end up cutting it up to make a dress for one of you guys. Mm -hmm. And exactly. yeah, and that that's that's kind of where it started. Uh, I did that a lot. Uh, people would, you know, oh, you like, uh, yeah, I like the dress. And I would say, uh -huh, yeah, I like it, knowing I was never gonna wear it. Mm -hmm. And then it would end up being something for one of, one of the three girls, so. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I still, even now, I realize that I still use patterns, and I'm, I'm that's that's me. Yeah, that's and that's I, okay. Like the, a lot of people right. think that they have to upcycle my way, which my way is just like just off the wall because I don't <laughs> like patterns. Um, right from the very beginning, you never, I never you liked never. patterns, <laughs> which is why I got in trouble so much. In, <laughs> in my sewing classes 
um, right. yeah, I got, in, I got in trouble for t- like shortcuts, um, all the stuff I do now that frustrates you guys. That's what I used to get in trouble for back then. <laughs> but so. find their own niche. Yeah. Everyone find their own niche. And yeah. Patterns are so. Yeah. And it, and it serves you well. Um, right. So like the picture that I put out to let you guys know that we were going live today, you made that top. I don't even think you saw it, but it's the... Um, it's the pattern top you have with the bell sleeves. You made it recently. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Lisa sent me the picture because you didn't have oh. the picture. <laughs> That's my sister. She had to send me a picture of mom. And somebody said, Mary Marianne says she would love to see both of our wedding pictures sometime. So I'll have to. Yeah. <laughs> I have mine. Sure. Sure. I do have a full body. I have to see. Um, fun fact, uh, my wedding photographer ran away before yeah. we could get pictures from him. So I have no professional pictures of my wedding. So, yeah, I've never told you guys that. Um, but I do have pictures that people took, and I'll mm-hmm. have to find one. Let's right. see. Next, we want to see an upcycle that you've done. So show us something, an upcycle that you've done. That's complete, right? Yeah, a complete <laughs> upcycle. <laughs> I have a lot of things that are complete. Well, you know, one of the things I had gotten into um, was making purses, bags, mm-hmm. out of jeans. And this, I got to get used to this camera, which way I have to go. And it's, uh, if you could see the jean placket, the... That's one. And the one I did most recently was for my youngest daughter. And this is, you can see the pockets. Oh, hold on. Let me put you full screen. Okay. There you go. And she did her original art. This is her original art on the front. Yeah. My. It um... says, be fabulous. <laughs> my little sister is very talented in uh, art very talented so that's, that's something I had really gotten into and I still uh, enjoy doing it and doing it with different things out someone had given me once a box full of upholstery mm-hmm. samples and I had started doing bags with that putting them together and just making bags with that So that was one of the things. And I also have uh, a um, jogging suit that I actually did complete. I wore it. Yes, you wore it when you visited me. Oh, somebody said they're working on a bag right now. Creations by Kimberly says she's doing one right now. Oh, cool. Can can she send us a picture? I would love to see it. I know, yeah. Um, Kimberly, if you can DM me a picture, we'd love to see it. Or DM me or, um, you know, send me a message on Facebook. We'd love to oh, see it. This is, Go ahead. This is a of what I was doing with those, uh, the box of, uh, these are upholstery samples. That yeah. I started making a bag. You have quite, you have a number of those, don't you? Yes. Yes. And it's, again, it's one of the messenger bags. And yeah, so people just give you stuff and you have to, yeah. So that was enough. Yeah, I think that's a common thing. You guys let us know in the comments. Like, do people, when they find out you sew, do they just give you stuff? And especially, like, when you're an upcycler, I've had so many people just try to give me clothes. And I'm already overwhelmed as it is. And so I very rarely accept them. But I have people always trying to give me clothes. Right. And sometimes you hate to turn it down. And this is why I say that. And I... because I always think I'm going to find a gym. Yeah. yeah but I never fo- do. FOMO. <laughs> You're missing out. Yeah. So I think if I turn it down, then I, there may be something in there that's so different, so unique. Yeah. But no, I have to I have to start saying, no, no, I'm good. I'm, thank you. But that that's okay. Yeah. So that leads us to talking about having a lot, having a lot of fabric, having a lot of stuff um 
my mom is in a situation where she is trying to pare down her yeah. collection yeah. and um how, does do you find that difficult parting with your pieces of your collection you know what i was I, matter of fact i was talking to your dad today and i was telling him I'm not finding it so hard getting rid of the things I've thrifted, mm -hmm. the clothing. That's not, my issue is going to be getting rid of all of this fabric. And if you guys could see, it's, I was, I was addicted. I'm just going to put it out there to buying <laughs> fabric. Yeah. I was, we had a store here it was Vogue Fabrics yeah. and they had a 99 cent table. All fabric was 99 cents a yard, and it had a lot. I would go in there, oh, just give me 10 yards of this. Give me five. And they would ask, what are you going to do with it? Oh, I don't know. It's 99 cents. You can't turn that down. So it, it's going to be kind of difficult to get rid of the fabric because with the with the thrifted things, you kind of say, okay, this was going to be a first, this was going to be that. But with the fabric, it's like, oh, there's so many possibilities. Yeah. Do I really? But it's got to go. It's, oh my gosh. So somebody said, how do you organize it? Do they really want to see? <laughs> I don't even. Okay. Oh, somebody said go. they love Vogue fabrics. I didn't even know that it still existed. Okay. Does it still exist? Or Catherine, or do you just remember it? No, it still exists. Oh. Can they see? Yes, that's it. And so she's going to be this summer going through it. And somebody yeah. will probably have to be there to hold her hand. <laughs> so that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. All right. So let's see what sewing machines you have. Okay. So I have a singer. Do you know which singer that is? No. <laughs> it's electronic, so. Okay. She has an electronic, a computerized singer. Computer, I'm sorry, computerized singer. Yeah. I have the cell right back yes. here. I call that my workhorse. Uh huh. A white overlock serger mm -hmm. and a singer, strong and tough. Heavy duty. Every day. That's what's on the tables. Exactly. So <laughs> what do you have hidden under the tables? I actually have a singer, a a vintage singer hidden under the table. And a genomi. Okay. Now in the closet, there's that's something totally different. Okay. I have another serger up under my cutting tape. Uh-huh. Uh, I think that's it. No, so, there's another finger upstairs. One, it's not even electronic. It's it's uh, runs off of foot power. The foot pedal. It's not, foot pedal. It's it's my mother-in-law's, and I uh, told my sister a long time ago when I get the space, I want it. So as soon as I got the space, she said, "Here, take this thing." Have you ever used it? I have not, but I do want to restore it. I, I understand that they work beautifully and I do, I would like to restore it. Uh, that's something that's on my list for when I retire. Okay. So, um, um, so who has more slow machines? You or me? You, you, I don't think yeah. so. Well, at yeah. this moment, at this literal moment, maybe, <laughs> maybe, but okay on a regular basis. I probably do. Yeah. <laughs> I probably do. And that's another addiction. I've gone to like garage sales and, and everybody's with me has to tell me to walk away, walk away. You do not need another song. And that's another thing. Machine. People have given and you I'm like, sewing machines for free over the years. They just come yes. and give you sewing machines. Yes. yes. 
Yes. I just absolutely. remembered I have my absolutely. mother in law sewing machine as well. I have Miss yeah, I have the kids' grandmother. Oh wow. I have her sewing machine sewing machine as well. So Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, so okay. That's crazy. You have your mother in laws and I have my mother in laws. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see before we go to questions, let's see something that you're working on. I know you have a sketch. Do you have it with you? Oh, it's in the other room. Okay. I forgot it. It's in the other room, but oh I do have the thing here that I have been working on. Okay. My coat. Oh yes. Yes. I can't wait for you to finish that. That's been a long time coming. Long time. Oh, it's let me my... give you full screen so everybody can see oh. the beauty. Yep. My can coat. We... we need to see the back. Oh, I love the back, yes. 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 You need to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> put it on me or put it on uh, man. Uh, no, put it on you. Okay. You got to model it like I model. <laughs> okay. Since you all have already seen my junkie room, it doesn't matter. Yes. Turn around. And that I love the back. That is so cool. And I do have the sleeves. I am working on the sleeves. You can see. Oh, wow. I didn't even see, you didn't even show me that. No, I didn't have, I've never shown you this. That's cool. Let me move my face out the way. I'm trying to get it in the middle. Yeah, that's how the sleeve is starting to form. So it'll be. That's going to be sick. So it's a work in progress. I've been working on it for about a year now. And when I get inspired, I'll work on it some more. I don't want to rush it. Yeah. That's just to say I finished it. Yeah. Uh, but, oh, that's what I want to show. If you can see the inside, can you see the inside? Or no? Yeah. Pattern, and I cut out muslin. You and laid the out piece, muslin. Uh huh. Uh, according to the pattern, and then begin to lay the pieces on top of the muslin, and then cut them out. Got it. Yeah. That makes so sense. That, yeah, that's what I do. So. That, I mean, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, hey, Tristan. <laughs> and I saw Kim Brown join, and let me see who else did I see. I see a bunch of you guys. I'm so glad, Susan. Um, IK, I, uh, thank you guys so much for joining. Some of you guys told me you would join. So thank you guys so much for joining. Um, but yeah, I think that that really does make it easier. You guys start putting in your questions, um, for my mom and, and we'll have her answer those, but if um, I can, <laughs> if you can, <laughs> yeah, if you can, um, but I think it's going to be so nice when you finish. And it makes sense. Like That's like one of those forever pieces, so you don't want to rush it. Right, yeah. right. And, when I, and what I do is I start putting pieces down, and if I don't like the way it looks, I'd say, okay, let, let's step away from it yeah. and see what how to do this so I like what how it turns out. Yeah. And I look at a work of art. Yes, me, so absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if you guys didn't uh, see the beginning, if you're just joining, this is going to be a weekly series um, for my members only group for any level membership. And if you want to be interviewed, if you want to be on the show, definitely send me an email at blueprintdiy at gmail.com. Blueprintdiy, all one, one word at gmail.com and um we'll get you scheduled for an interview um let's see question let's see 
Has there ever been a project that you abandoned and why? And then regret it not finishing it? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have one over... Because it just wasn't what you see in your brain yeah, and how it begins to form. Sometimes are two totally different things. So you just kind of throw it to the side and... After a while, you 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 come back to it. But I've had some things I've actually thrown out, and then later on, like that would have been so cute with X Y Z, yep. but it's gone now because you just I got so frustrated with it that it wasn't coming out the way I imagined. And I, you know what I said, I'm done, and I throw it out. But then later on, I find either an event or something else I could have worn it with. And I regret it not finishing it. But what I've done lately is that I'll wait a while before I'll get rid of something. But I have some things now that at least one project I have now that mm-hmm. I have abandoned it because what I had in my head and what I drew on paper, it's not turning out that way at all. Yeah. So I said, okay, it's time to step away. Yeah. Okay. Time really quickly, away. Shirley wants to know what is the purpose of the muslin? It's it's the pattern. I like I said, I take the I cut out the pattern piece from the muslin. I you know use the muslin, cut out the pattern piece, and then I lay the pieces. It's like it it uh, anchors it. Yeah. So I put all the pattern the the. And so you know, like it gives you an easier view. It's like doing a puzzle. Yes. And so now you have an yeah. outline for the puzzle, and it just makes right. it easier. So you, it actually is the pattern piece, but in muslin. Yeah. So it just, you just, and I, and it, it stabilizes it. Yeah, that's true. As I put it on, and like I say, it's, and a lot of times the pieces go beyond the muslin. Yeah. But then I cut it out. So I, I am cutting out the pattern. So it just gives me a reference. Yeah. I put it like that. A reference point. Um, someone wants to know what is the favorite thing that you made for me ever? Wedding dress. <laughs> because yeah. it was a challenge. It was the wedding dress. Um, although I'd done before, but I have to say the wedding dress. Let me see. The picture is behind me. Um, you can answer the next question while you're doing that. Oh, someone says do you think that you'll put a hood on the coat? I thought about it. Don't tempt me. I thought about that. I really, really did. And I was trying to figure out how to put one on there and it looked good or how to put one on so that it can be detachable because I love hood. I did consider that. And now that you said it, I have to go back to that, to that thought. That's a sign. A hood needs to go on this coat. Yep. So, as I said, my first coat had, the one I made had a hood on it. So, yeah, I think I will do that. So, thank you for the suggestion, Kim. Yeah, I actually did think about it and then kind of waved it away. But I think I'm going to go back to that thought. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, Mm -hmm. The picture that I have uh, really close, it is not is i'm turned to the side so you can't even see it it's halter dress wide at the bottom but it's i'm turned to the side you can't even really see the dress i don't have one in, in i'll here. post it i'll make a post and okay. show you guys so you can see um but yeah she's made every single one so recently i was supposed to be going to an event <laughs> and i waited too late and I didn't want to bother her. And I didn't ask her to make me something to wear. And she was so upset because I went looking to buy a dress off the rack. And I ended up not buying anything because I just, like, I'm, I'm, look, and it's so funny because when I was little, I used to think like, oh my gosh, we're so poor. We can't afford to go to the store. Now I'm just like so spoiled that I'm just like, <laughs> ugh. I cannot buy a dress off the rack. <laughs> off the rack formal is a big word. Yeah. Ask her daughter. Oh, yeah. My daughter, my uh, niece's daughter, all my nieces, 
everybody, everybody, every girl in the family, even my sons, like, Charlie won't buy, he's not going to buy, like, really nice things or his ties or vests from the store. He's going to ask you. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, and somebody said you can put buttons in the collar to make the hood detachable if you like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a good uh, suggestion, too. Yeah, I'm going to go with the hood. I'm going to go with the hood. I like that idea. Yeah. So I hope you guys have, oh, that was a loud clap, sorry. I hope you guys <laughs> have enjoyed um, meeting my mom. Um, this, of course, will not be her last last appearance. Um, but she is also in the class. So um, if you do decide to join the class, then we all get to know each other a lot better um, in that um uh, upcycle get together so um you can hit the join button to get to know more about that um last question i'll take one last question do you feel like vintage sewing machines this is from uh uh-oh this is from cheeks do you feel like vintage sewing machines i can't read it do you feel like vintage sewing machines are worth restoring for actual use or more for collecting I, you know, I, I've never had one restored, but from what I've read, I probably like it better than the newer ones because yeah. they're all metal. They're yeah. all metal. They were meant to last. They were meant for durability. Yeah. They were, you know, I'm I sorry. I know a lot of people love their vintage machines. Like, they yeah. swear by their vintage machines. Yes. Like, they will not yeah. use yes. anything, especially when yeah. they're sewing, like, some yeah. heavier things. They will yeah. not use I think they're worth restoration for everyday use yeah uh because they were horses they were yeah. meant to they were meant for the heavy duty for because people did a lot of sewing then yeah. so i think it's worth it to get a vintage machine and uh have it restored yeah 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 absolutely, I absolutely. So all right you guys thank you guys so much for joining us and thank you guys to all, everybody who's going to watch this um afterwards um, after a month, this will go to members only. And like I said, we'll be back here next Monday at 6 p.m. in the members only group. Like I said, it's for all members, no matter what your level. Um, and we do have some really exciting videos coming up on Thursday. I will be announcing the winners to our sewing machine giveaway. So if you put your name in to win any of one of those Janome's, uh, sewing machines, definitely watch Thursday's video. I have an exciting, um, t-shirt video for you guys on Saturday. So definitely come back and watch that. All right. I will see you guys later. Bye. Bye.